In today's video, I'm going to talk about five gluten-free diet mistakes you must avoid. Now, as you know, the gluten-free diet is a very strict diet. And in this video, we will highlight the basic mistakes people tend to make. Hi, I'm Mike Hines from JustKnowGluten.com. Now, if you like the video and you like the content, want to subscribe to my channel, hit the subscribe button down below. Right, let's get straight into the content. The gluten-free diet is an extremely strict diet. Unlike most other diets which have a certain degree of laxity, the gluten-free diet does not have that luxury. Most of the people on the gluten-free diet are gluten intolerant. Even a small amount of gluten in their diet will cause symptoms such as headaches, lethargy, rashes, mood swings, inflammation, etc. None of these are worth writing home about and should be avoided. And they can be avoided if gluten is avoided. Yet many people make mistakes and let gluten cre creep into their diet either through ignorance or just a lack of willpower. This video will highlight five of the most common mistakes that are made and how you should avoid them. Mistake number one. The first mistake that most people make is to think that products that do not list gluten as an ingredient are automatically gluten free. Unfortunately, this is not the case. Gluten creeps into many products either indirectly and you can never be 100% sure unless you check. Gluten is used as a stabilizing agent in many commercial food products. Yet, since it is an agent and not a food ingredient, in many cases it is not even mentioned on the label. Even healthy foods such as vitamins and supplements have been found to contain gluten. And to make matters worse, gluten doesn't always come in the form of food. Things like soaps, creams, shampoos, lipsticks, deodorants, hairsprays and other beauty products may contain gluten because of the wheat germile that is often used in the manufacture of these products. Mistake number two. Cross-contamination can happen at any time. Now I have discussed this very topic in a previous video and I will leave a link to it in the description below. Or you can check it out on my channel gluten advice. I will also leave a link to my channel in the description below. Toasting gluten-free bread in a toaster that was used to toast normal bread will, will cause cross-contamination. You do need to be watchful of the way your food is being handled and prepared. Cross-contamination often occurs in a household where one person is gluten intolerant and the rest are not. Even the most well-meaning family members may, may, may make a mistake because it's always the small things that matter. To quote that old saying, the devil is in the details. By double dipping a bread knife in butter, they may have inadvertently left tiny gluten containing crumbs in the butter. This is a very common mistake made by people. Mistake number three. It always goes down first before it comes up. You must remember this. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that when you first start the gluten-free diet, your body will react negatively. You won't feel so good. And you may feel sick. You may even suffer with all symptoms and cravings you will be very tempted to throw in the towel and give up on the diet. I advise you, don't do that. You will recover from these negative effects. Your body does need to adapt and readjust to the new diet. You should recover in a few days and will come out feeling stronger, healthier and a whole brand new you. You will also notice many pre-existing conditions slowly dissipate and disappear. Mistake number four. Another mistake that many people make is going gluten-free, but not adopting a healthy, well-rounded diet. You got to remember, the gluten-free diet only has one rule. 
avoid gluten. It doesn't concern itself with micro and macro nutrients. You, on the other hand, need to watch your diet. You want to make sure that you are getting sufficient protein, fats, carbs, vitamins and minerals while remaining gluten free. Mistake number five. Just don't believe everything you read, especially food labels. There are plenty of major food companies that proudly display the words gluten free on their product. In reality, due to legal loopholes, products containing 20 parts per million gluten are referred to as gluten free. This is the harsh reality of the world today, where the dollar is more important than the consumer's health. Therefore, the onus is on you to make sure the food you eat really is gluten free. Why not keep a food journal and record down how you are feeling that day? Over time you will notice patterns emerging and it will be easy to see what is affecting you. Then you just need to tweak your diet. It will take you a little time to achieve a completely gluten free life. It will be a challenge for you but rest assured that it is achievable and worth the struggle. Here are just a few gluten free recipe ideas to get you started. It may initially seem challenging to eliminate gluten from your diet, especially when it is realized how many foods actually contain these grains as a secondary ingredient. With a little patience, you will realize that there is a whole world of food options free from gluten. Here are just a few ideas to get you started. The first one is quinoa. Quinoa may be one of the most versatile new ingredients you discover on your gluten-free journey. It cooks faster than rice and is a complete protein source. And this makes it ideal for vegetarians and those following a vegan diet. Quinoa can be made into a single dish, a one-pot meal, ideal for lunch or supper, or it can be transformed into a delicious hot breakfast cereal. As well, quinoa flakes can be used to make delectable brownies and wonderful desserts. Here's my recipe for Tex-Mex quinoa. One cup of quinoa, two tablespoons of olive oil, two cloves, minced garlic, one and a half cups of vegetable broth, one can of rinsed black beans, one cup of corn, one can of diced tomatoes. You can add cumin, salt, pepper to taste. Put all the ingredients into a pot for one hour. Some people prefer to rinse all of the yellow off their quinoa prior to bringing to a boil as they say it ends up tasting less bitter. You can experiment yourself and see if it makes much of a taste difference to you. This is a great recipe for busy nights when you have to run the kids to soccer practice right after school or you have a busy evening planned and the leftovers make a delicious cold salad for lunch the next day. Low in fat and high in protein and fiber, what more could you want? For a delicious hot breakfast option, try preparing quinoa with water like normal. Then simmer with coconut milk, raisins, cranberries, a dash of nutmeg and allspice and a couple of petals of all star of enzyme. This is hearty, satisfying and very, very tasty. How about a smoothie? Making your own smoothies is an excellent choice on those busy mornings when you can't sit down for breakfast. They are also ideal post-workout or as a snack in between regular meals. Simply throw some milk, pineapple juice, almond milk or orange juice into your blender Add some crushed ice, some organic fruit, and presto, hit the button. You can always thicken your shake up with yogurt, a banana, or even certain protein powders. Go on, enjoy experimenting. Quesadillas and enchiladas. Corned tortillas can be your new best friend. Do be sure to read the label, although there are plenty of gluten free brands available. You can make your own quesadilla with some cubed chicken breast or leftover steak and sprinkle some cheese on top. 
using fresh or plain spices can do wonders for your taste buds. But be careful on pre-made mixed spices and always check the label, as some of them contain fillers that may contain gluten or be a source of cross-contamination. Anyone for a snack? Rice cakes come in an amazing variety these days. You can practically buy any flavour potato chip as a rice cake or rice cracker. Cheddar cheese, barbecue and savoury tomato and basil are just a few popular choices. For extra protein, try adding some almond or cashew butter onto a plain rice cake. Kale chips. There are many recipes for homemade kale chips on the internet. Basically, you want to lightly toss ripped up pieces of kale in some olive oil or grapeseed oil and season. Garlic, salt, pepper and dill are some great options. Then you bake the seasoned kale on a cookie sheet until it turns crispy like sushi seaweed. But be careful not to use too much oil or you will end up with a gloppy mess. Do take enjoyment in your improved health. Why not try networking with others on a gluten-free diets for inspiration? Embrace your time in the kitchen as an adventure and a new chapter in your health. I do hope you enjoyed the video and you found the content informative and helpful. If so, why not give it a like or subscribe to my channel down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye for now.